Hello friends, my name is Dheeraj Bhatti from wallstreetmojo.com. This is part 28 of our ratio analysis video series. And in this installment, we learn all about leverage ratios. In simple terms, leverage ratio indicates the proportion of debt and equity in the capital structure of the company. So in this tutorial, we'll basically focus on four things. Number one, we'll understand what leverage ratio actually means. Number two, what its formula and the calculations. Number three, we look at uh, leverage ratio calculations for Colgate and number four, its interpretations. But before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder, we'll be needing all the working files of Colgate case study for this video. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, please do so from the link in the description box below. And also to keep yourself updated with investment banking and core finance concepts, please do subscribe to our channel, Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. What is leverage ratio? Leverage ratio is a part of the ratio analysis framework and it comes under the financial risk category. When we look at the word leverage, uh, you should always uh, you know, think of how leverage word is used in finance. Most Commonly, the leverage word is used to represent the capital structure of the company. When we say the company is highly leveraged, we say that, oh, the company might have higher proportion of debt as compared to equity. And when it is low leveraged, then we assume that the company has a lower debt as compared to equity. So leverage ratio is nothing but the proportion of debt versus the proportion of equity. So it, what does it give essentially? It tells us, you know, how your assets or uh, how how basically your investments in capital expenditures is kind of financed. So is it through the internal sources like the shareholders equity or is it you know, through the external parties like ex banks, etc., you know, where you take funds via debt. This is a very useful measure because let's say if there is a company which has a very high amount of debt as compared to equity, right? What happens? Higher amount of debt will lead to higher interest expense, right? So that's one thing that you have to obviously pay every year or every quarter. And second is you, as, as a part of the debt, you have to repay its principal amount as well at, at frequent intervals, right? What happens if you are not able to pay that debt? What happens, right? The creditors have the right to liquidate your assets you know they can take over your assets they can liquidate and recover the amount whatever uh, they they kind of owe that's that's what the creditors can do right essentially what we mean here is that if there is a higher debt to equity then the company is a bit risky in general because uh, it might run into trouble if there are uh, periods where the company is not able to make enough money that's what we are trying to understand through leverage ratio. So let's let's now look at how debt to equity or the leverage ratio is kind of defined as. So what comes under debt and what comes under equity is what we will discuss now. So when we talk about debt, we say that all kinds of debt needs to be included. The long-term debt, short-term debt, current portion of long-term debt, everything. So I'll just write it down, long-term debt short term debt and as a part of the long term debt there is something called current portion of long term debt so what it means is that this is the amount that is due in the current year out of the total long term debt all these three items are kind of included as a part of the debt and the equity we basically are talking about all the equity so it's like total shareholders equity so it's a sum total of uh, it starts with common stock and then the additional paid in capital and then uh, the treasury stocks, etc. So all needs to be added up and you will get this final number from the balance sheet. So let us now do a quick calculation and find out the debt to equity or the leverage ratio of the company. Say, for example, the total long term debt is 5000 and uh, the short term debt is let's say 200 and the current portion of long term debt is another let's say 300 okay so what's the total debt that we have the total debt is basically 
five five zero zero. Okay, that's the total amount of debt that the company has. Let's say when it comes to total shareholders equity, let me just give you a number directly. Let's say it is two thousand. Okay, so what's the debt to equity ratio or the leverage ratio? That is nothing but five five zero zero divided by two thousand. So it comes out to be two point seven five in this case. So leverage ratio calculations is typically very very simple. Just that you have to be mindful of its interpretation. So, coming to the interpretations part of it, how much do you think this is? Is this good or bad? Obviously, you cannot say that right now because you have to understand which industry it operates into. You cannot uh, compare and say that okay, since it's greater than two, you know it's not good. You have to really understand in which industry it operates into. So, if it's a highly capital intensive sector, let's say. Energy or uh, utilities, or let's say oil and gas. So in that you will find the leverage ratios are very high. So it, it can be as high as ten to twelve. Okay, those companies have a very high leverage ratio. But when there are companies like uh, sectors like services sector, for example, you know in that it is very common to find a leverage ratio of point five. Okay, uh, they may not be totally or they may not be dependent on debt at all so that 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 is because they don't need investments in capital expenditures you know heavy investments are not required in services sector but for oil and gas and capital goods sector or uh, automobiles you will find that since the investment is so large they just don't have enough of the equity capital to look at so they have to rely on the external you know, players like banks and financial institutions who can lend them debt And uh, through that, you know, they their leverage positions increases. Okay, so it's it's very common in such industries. So when it comes to the comparison and interpretations, you need to understand which sector does it operate into, and uh, compare it accordingly. So if it was a energy and utilities sector, this two point seven five was an excellent number to look at. But if it was a services sector, obviously this is a very over leveraged situation to look at. I hope you understood the leverage ratio now let's look at how the leverage ratio or the debt to equity ratio of colgate looks like here is the balance sheet of colgate and i want you to scroll down to row number 148 this is where we will calculate the debt to equity ratio or the leverage ratio so if you remember the formula debt contains all kinds of debt short term as well as long term debt and equity is nothing but the total shareholders equity so we'll look at all of that uh, in the case of colgate now let's calculate it for 2016 scroll up for the balance sheet liabilities so here we have different types of liabilities so the one which we are interested in is the short term debt so notes and long i mean loans payable this is basically the short term debt so that needs to be included first i'll put a bracket because there will be different types of debts that needs to be added first so this is uh, c23 that is notes payables then we have the current portion of long term debt okay so that also needs to be added so it's it's zero here right now as you can see it's it's zero but we need to still take it because when we put that as a formula and add it up across uh, the other years we it it has to give the right it should give the right number right because uh, 254 is the number that current portion of long term debt uh, reflects right for 2019 so that number needs to be included here in 2019 okay so for now we are only looking at 2016 so we still will add this in this in this cell the next thing is looking at the long term liabilities we have this long term debt okay that is 6520 this completes the total amount of debt that colgate has this is short term and this is the long term right now we need to divide this by total shareholders equity let's look at the shareholders equity section we have the common stock additional paid in capital retained earnings so basically what we want is we should add all this up and the final number that is the total shareholders equity needs to be taken so here it is 17 okay so that needs to be taken here let's see what the ratio is that comes out to be 284.29 so that's that's very high because the shareholders equity of colgate is pretty low Now, if you look at the ratio here, 
this ratio has decreased considerably over the years and uh, we can probably uh, try to find out the reasons what has happened uh, you know, why why the company is actually showing that kind of a trend okay so let's look at the shareholders equity section and the total debt so if you look at the debt you know debt has fairly been in, in lines with what it was right it has just moved from 6520 to 3334 not much of the deviations here but why there was a change in the ratio so much so it has to come from the denominator so we see that the denominator has changed considerably from 17 to 1101 and uh, why is that so you know the reason could be two folds one is that uh, the retained earnings have been increasing every year obviously the company is uh, making profit so the retained earning reflects the each year's profit is being added up to the previous year's balance so that's one and second is that uh, they have a they we see that there's a treasury stock as we discussed in our previous videos too treasury stocks represent the buyback portion of the stocks from the open market which the company must have done colgate has a buyback policy they keep on buying uh, from the open market their own shares and that's reflected as the treasury stock so this the the essence is that because of the presence of so much so high amount of treasury stock the overall shareholders equity number has been kind of very volatile it's it's very low base and at the end of the day if you try to interpret this ratio altogether which we just calculated uh, it's probably not making much sense here again uh, debt to equity ratio you might not want to consider it in your final analysis but do remember that uh, whenever there is a high capital expenditure companies high capex like capital goods automobile they should have ideally a very high debt to equity ratio and the companies which are like low capital intensive like services sector they have a low debt to equity ratio so i hope now that you have understood the leverage ratios and uh, its interpretation and its calculations i hope you found this video to be useful please do like and share and if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video, then you may do so by writing about it in the comments section. Also, we come up with interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics regularly. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notification about our latest videos. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.